for you are holy. You are true. And there is none like you. None like you, Father. None like you. And Lord, we take this opportunity. We say thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for the price of your son, for the seal of the Holy Spirit, for the angels that put up with us. Thank you for your word that won't return void. And we ask for your forgiveness right now, Lord, for every area of our life where we've offended you. In word, thought, and deed. Works of the flesh, selfish ambitions. We ask for your forgiveness in every area where we couldn't, wouldn't deny ourselves. And putting things into the wrong kingdom. But we ask, Father, for your forgiveness, for your mercies and your grace, for the washing of the blood and the quickening of the Holy Spirit. As we welcome you, Holy Spirit, to come here today. Keep us refreshed. Establish us and perfect us in your presence. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our heart to receive. As we continue to lift the name above all names, Jesus. For you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy of all glory and all honor and praise, Master. Oh, Let the anointing and the power and the glory of your love break every yoke of bondage. Remove every scale from the eyes and hardening from the heart and deafness from the ears. Lord, place us in the position to where it's no longer we that live, but you that live. As we surrender to you all, we surrender all. We surrender all. All. All of our reasoning, all of our carnality. Where we repent in every area of criticism. In the name of Jesus, refresh us today in your presence. Grant us revelation, impartation, confirmation. And more. 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 More of you, Lord. More oil. Yeah. Come on, just ask him for some more oil today. Oil of joy, oil of gladness, and oil of burial. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's a good day to die, you know, to yourself. Jesus, you're so good to us. Thank you, Master. Let your kingdom be done on earth as it is in heaven. And establish your will right here in us and through us that you may be glorified in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Turn to John 18, please. John 18. Uh. (laughs) Go ahead, lift your hands to heaven and just ask for another drink. There's nothing worse than a sober Christian. The Bible says, be drunk in the spirit. Be not filled with wine, but be drunk in the spirit. Glory. In John 18. How many know time is short? And God is moving in a dramatic, quickly way. The Bible tells us that in the latter days, knowledge would increase. Not only worldly knowledge where they become dependent on technology, but spiritual knowledge where we'd be able to overcome the deception of worldly knowledge. Does everybody understand? Because there's a knowledge from above that sustains you, but the knowledge of the earth will separate you. There's a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, and he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In other words, hallowed in you first. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it goes on, but it was a guideline to prayer. And in this, he was talking about his kingdom. Jesus came to preach the kingdom of God. And there is a kingdom of God that is an eternal kingdom. There's a kingdom that's within us and there's a kingdom that will manifest here on earth for a thousand years. And in this, Jesus came preaching, behold, the kingdom of God. He said, repent because the kingdom of God is upon you. But he was a representation of the kingdom of God. 
And there is a life in the kingdom. And we need to talk more about the life in the kingdom because the main purpose as a believer is to live a kingdom life. And John 18 and verse 33, would you go there please? In verse 33, would you read it with me? Then Pilate entered Praternium again, called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, Are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you this concerning me? And Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? And Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. So he was saying here, Listen, my kingdom is not of this world. So we must no longer live according to the world, but according to the kingdom that is not of this world, because the kingdom has a king, and he's your king. And he's also called us to be kings and priests in his kingdom. But there is a life in the kingdom that must be understood. Romans 14. The Bible tells us that if you're a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. And that's the area of relying on worldliness to be your provider, to be your healer, to be your deliverer, to be your friend. That's not kingdom living. The Bible says, come out from among them and be what? Separate and touch nothing unclean. Then I will receive you as my son and daughter. In Romans 14, would you read it with me in verse 16? Romans 14, 16. Is everybody there? Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. Now, this is important. Read this together. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in what? In the Holy Spirit. So we know that the kingdom of God cannot be manifested without the Holy Spirit. In other words, what he's saying is, listen, my kingdom is not of this world. And the only way that you're going to walk in my kingdom is to not walk according to the world, but walk in the spirit. Walking in the spirit is the only way to walk in the world that doesn't belong here. So he said, listen, it is what? It is peace. What? Righteousness and joy. It's peace righteousness and joy we're in the holy spirit which is going to keep you the life in the kingdom of god without the presence and the guidance of the holy spirit you cannot live a kingdom life go to second corinthians 3 life in the kingdom is everybody there second corinthians 3 and verse 4 oh it's good to hear the pages turn it on a sunday morning <laughs> Second Corinthians 3, 4. Let's read it together. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as what? Ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the what? Of the spirit for the what? The letter kills and the spirit brings life. But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious? So we know that it is the ministry of the spirit of Christ to live a life in the kingdom. And that is the only way. There is a kingdom Life that God wants us to live more dramatically, more earnestly. He's saying, come out more, come out more, come out more, come out more, come out more. It doesn't mean that we're going to, you know, you know, be like little worms that 
bury themselves in the ground and stuff, you know. We're going to be amongst the world, but we're not going to cooperate according to the world. We cooperate according to the guidelines of the kingdom, not according to the world. Our hope and trust is not in the world. Our hope and trust is in him. In other words, because you are a citizen of the kingdom and you have access to the king and his treasures and everything that's available to you, we go to him first for healing. We go to him first for guidance. We go to him first for prosperity, for direction. We go to him for everything. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, then all things will be added unto you. Your job is not going to save you. Your pastor ain't going to save you. <laughs> Your friends are not going to save you. Nobody's going to save you but Jesus. And he's going to save you by sending his spirit to you. Does everybody understand that? Why? So you can live a kingdom life. He's called the spirit of grace. He's called the spirit of Christ. So it is the ministry of what then? Of the spirit and the ministry who is the ministry of the spirit of Christ who's going to allow you to walk in the kingdom to live a kingdom life. Go to 2 Corinthians 5 in verse 14. 2 Corinthians 5, 14. Would you read it with me? For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for who? Themselves. They should no longer live for who? Themselves. But for who? Him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, for now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Those who live according to the flesh live according to the worldly way and put their trust in the world. Are you hearing? You may be blessed with a job. You may be blessed with spouse and children. You may be blessed with all kinds of things, but your trust is not in the blessing. It's in the blesser. Even though we have known Christ... According to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. In other words, we don't acknowledge Jesus no more in the flesh. Because he was not, he's no longer the Jesus in the flesh. He is the king of glory. He, the flesh was a representation so that he can become the lamb that died for me and you. So that he could take on all sins into his flesh. So that he could exchange and birth the spirit of Christ. That you and I can walk with his spirit now. Why? So we can live a kingdom life. See, the kingdom life is an eternal life. Everything is focused on eternity, not present. Now, go to verse uh, 17. Would you read it? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? He is a, it's not a one-time event. <laughs> it's a continuous. It's a life. See, you're becoming a new creation every single second. New, new, new New, new. It's not just a one-time event. It's a continuous way of life now. Why? He was in Christ, in the spirit of Christ. He was walking in the spirit as associated with the kingdom life who's being transformed new every day. Every second, you're becoming brand new. More and more in his image likeness. More and more into his character. And the more you press in, the more you take time with him, the more you're in the word, the more you're in the spirit, the more you become like him. And the more the old man begins to fade away. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. See, the places where old things, all old things have passed away. All old things. Where everything is brand new. Every area of your reasoning is new now. Every area of your accepted thoughts are new. You no longer accept old thoughts. You no longer accept old pleasures. You no longer accept old way of doing business. There is no more old. Everything is new according to his kingdom. Does everybody understand that? Behold, all things have become what? New. Oh, hallelujah. In the spirit of Christ, old things... The kingdom of darkness will pass away. And a life in the kingdom of light will begin to manifest if you cooperate with the Spirit. So there's got to be a cooperation with the Spirit of God, isn't there? Go to Matthew 16. 
Matthew 16. Life in the kingdom. Old relationships. <laughs> we won't go there right now. <laughs> Matthew 16 and verse 21. Would you read it with me? From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took a, him aside and re, began to rebuke Jesus, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. So this is powerful because Peter was actually in the flesh. And, and, and Jesus said to him, Get behind me, Satan. Now here's Peter who hung around with Jesus for a few years, saw miracles, saw him raise the dead, did all kinds of things. Jesus is getting ready to fulfill his call and die on the cross. And Peter stands between him and the cross and says, you can't do this, man. I love you too much. Oh, you little flesh creature, get out of my way. (laughs) And he says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Man, Peter must have felt like an idiot. Wait a minute, Lord, I thought we were, like, tight. (laughs) Come on, man, you know, you're the one that's always rescuing me. (laughs) Yes, I'm rescuing again. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful. Say mindful. Mindful. Of the things of God, but the things of what? So he was trying to do something of, thinking that he was doing something of God, By protecting Jesus. Can you imagine? Hold on, God, let me help you. No. So what had happened was Satan, a demon, entered Peter and tried to prevent Jesus from fulfilling what he was supposed to do. Does everybody understand that? Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Why? Because that demon is associated with Satan's kingdom. Is everybody okay? He said, get behind me. You're mindful of things of what? Men. Flesh. Flesh. Do you know that fear of sin? Worry sin? All of that. Why? It's associated with what? The flesh. See, so when you're in the flesh and you're associated with the carnality, you're associated with the kingdom of darkness. And even Peter, who was the kingdom of light, was right in front of him, talking with him, showing signs and wonders, still tried to do something in the flesh, and Jesus had to rebuke him to remove the kingdom of darkness from Peter's. Does everybody understand that? Then he says something very powerful. Look at 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, in other words, the kingdom of light, let him what? Oh, deny himself. Peter couldn't. That's why Jesus said, Satan, get behind me. Let me help you. Deny himself, take up his cross, and what? Follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will what? Will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will what? Find it. Why? It's the life in the kingdom. Because that's where we belong. So we must not try to rescue our life in this world. We must continue to maintain the life in the kingdom by walking in the spirit of Christ. You know, no one said it was going to be easy. You know, you and I have been brought up loving the world. Come on, we hung out in those nightclubs and all those other places where it said food and spirits, and they weren't kidding. They should have just crossed out the word spirit and said food and demons. You know, I mean, we did all of these things to try to fulfill the flesh. Buying all kinds of things, spending all kinds of money, drugs, alcohol, this, that, relationships. Always looking for a fulfillment to feed the flesh, which actually we were feeding Satan's kingdom and not knowing it. Living according to the world, who the ruler of this world is Satan. But Jesus is calling us out even more now because he's coming. Even more now. A life of denial of self. A greater life of a denial of self than we've ever reached. Even more. So Jesus said, listen man, you got to deny yourself. In verse 26, he said, what profit is a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? 
Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come into the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each one according to his works. Surely I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. Uh, you know, and there's two perspectives in this. It's, in other words, those who are going to be alive when Christ returns, but it's those who are not willing to die to self. There are some still standing here who are not willing to die to themselves. And when they see the kingdom of God coming, it's going to be too late. So Peter was in the flesh. He was guided by a demon. Jesus rebuked Satan's kingdom. <laughs> Just like he normally did with Peter and us. Jesus exposes that self is connected to darkness. And that we must deny ourselves. Carry the See, the self is associated with the kingdom of darkness that we must deny. The cross is a representation of the truth. And to follow the life in the kingdom. Is everybody okay? 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. That's why the Bible says, Seek ye the kingdom of God first, not second. First. First. Seek the kingdom of God first before you walk in the flesh. 1 Corinthians 2, in verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. The Spirit searches what? All things. And it reveals things to us. See, what he's saying is you can no longer live according to this world and what you see and what you hear. See, the Lord wants to bring us in an area of the life of the kingdom where we begin to see the eternal things. Where we begin to see angels. Where we begin to see things to come where we're able to see in the spirit realm. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of Joel, that he'll pour out a spirit and his sons and daughters will see visions. They will prophesy. There will be signs and wonders. There'll be signs in the heavens. Well, see, those are access places for me and you. But if we're too busy trying to maintain our life, you won't see those. See, the world is called survival mode. If you're in survival mode, you're in the flesh. But if you're in trust mode, you're in the spirit. You must trust in everything, no matter what it is. Seek the kingdom of God before you do anything. That's why the Bible says, Acknowledge me in all of your ways, and I'll establish your steps. Commit to me your works, and I'll establish your thoughts. So to live in the spirit... And to see the things of his kingdom and the deep things of his kingdom, you must constantly walk in the spirit. Does everybody get it? This is the life of the kingdom. Remember, we do not belong here. This is only a temporary place. Can you imagine how long anybody lives? 80 years of, you know, whatever. Whippy compared to eternity. Don't get so caught up in here, man. Go to Romans 8. Yeah, but what about this? This is not butt ministry. The Bible says that we're the head and not the what? Tail. Tail. So don't butt me. <laughs> Glory. Are you all understanding this? You getting this? You all right? You got to remember, we're at a critical time right now. It's very critical. You're seeing what's going on in the government. Look at what Satan has done. Look, I don't know if you remember, but about a year ago or whatever, one of the prophecies that the Lord had given us was that one of the things that Satan was going to do is try to hinder and destroy the economy in this country. And look at what he's accomplishing already. Why? Because 666 is a representation of Satan taking over government, the economy and finances, and religion. That's 666. And he's already here right now. The Antichrist is here. 
And so are his cohorts. We are the generation that will receive the turn of the Lord. Make no doubt of that. Oh, glory. In Romans chapter 8. Is everybody there? Let's start somewhere. Verse 5. Romans 8, 5. Read it together, please. For those who live according to the flesh. Now, according to the flesh is according to the world. Does everybody get it? Set their minds on the things of the flesh. In other words, they whole focus is on the things of the world because they're in survival mode. How am I going to survive? That isn't kingdom life. Kingdom life isn't concerned how you're going to survive. Your concern is how you're going to expand the kingdom and God will prosper you. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, so they're setting their minds on things. They're setting their thoughts and they're setting their focus on things. You're either setting your focus on your life or on the life of Christ. That's kingdom living. Go on. For it to be what? Carnally minded is death. So if you're an individual that's still setting your focus and your hope on the things of the world, it says that it's death. To be carnally minded, the end result will be death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot what? They can't please God. So we set our thoughts on the things above or what we call the things in the spirit. Every part of your life is now to live in the kingdom that is not of this world. Every open door of work, relations, vacations, travels, uh, trials and tribulations, entertainment, anything, prosperity, everything associated with your life right now is to expand the kingdom of God. These are open doors of opportunity to expand. Listen, God didn't bless you with a job just for you. He blessed you with a job so you can bring the kingdom of God in there. He didn't bless you with a relationship just for you. He blessed you with a relationship to expand the kingdom of God. He didn't just bring a friend across your path just to go out and do pleasurous things. He brought people across your path to expand the kingdom of God. Everything in your life is to expand the kingdom of God. To come out of survival, but to live a life in the kingdom. Everything, if you are truly set and your heart is set right with God, then everything that you do and you purpose, there's always a pure motive behind it of saying, I'm going to expand God's kingdom. I'm going to expand God's kingdom. I'm going to expand. What? Okay, Lord, if I purchase this, how can I use this to expand God's kingdom? If I do this, how can I expand God's kingdom? How can I? See, do you understand or else you're setting your mind on the things of the flesh? And, you're, and the devil will use you to expand his kingdom instead of God's kingdom. Is everybody okay? Listen, even with your talents, your time, your finances, your experiences are no longer a life of take. They are a life of give. They are a life of what? Give. Why? Because your main motive is to expand the kingdom of God. You no longer live a life of survival or for yourself. Your life is to expand the kingdom of God in every area. This is what we were created for. Remember, this is not your home. Quit fighting for your material things. Quit fighting for your life and surrender it and let God be God. This is a life of the kingdom, not a life of yourself. Your talents, let them be used for expanding the kingdom. Your jobs, your abilities, your finances. Quit hoarding all your money and trying to save it all. It ain't yours anyways. I'm not saying give it all away and be an idiot. But ask God what you're supposed to do. Support expanding the kingdom of God. Do your tithing. Do your offerings. Do what you're supposed to do. Oh, look at this. Hallelujah. <laughs> and it's on the altar. <laughs> uh, 
We won't pass it around, don't worry. Colossians 3. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3. <laughs> Life in the kingdom is a wonderful place. It's a place where you no longer live, but he that lives. It's a place a life of denial is a joy. It's a denial of self is a joy. When you see, man, you'll come to a place. Let me share something with you. In the place of living in the kingdom, when you sense self, it'll be disgusting to you. It'll be filthy and dirty. You won't even want to. So, you want to just bury it. You will not. When you ignore, when you you'll be sensitive enough to realize that self is beginning to get strengthened, and you'll say no. It'll be repulsive for you. Is everybody okay? In Colossians chapter 3, is everybody there? Verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Hello. Above. Not beneath. Above. Seek those things. Look, see. Here. Wait. Get it. Grab it. Take it. Seek those things that are above. Where Christ is. Where who is? Where Christ is. <laughs> Sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him where? In glory. Oh, wonderful. Seek those things. Set your mind on those things above. Look for those things. Hebrews 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 14. Of course, the devil will come out to you and say, come on, I got an excuse for you for this. He'll give you reasoning and calculation. He'll start man manifesting the butt ministry in you. But, 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 but. He'll start saying, you know, but I, I, I need these in, and but I, I got to do this, and but this, and, and but that, and, and but. In verse 14, seeing then that we have a high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our butts, our weaknesses. But was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. So he knows what you're going through. So if he knows what you're going through, isn't that good enough? The whole thing is, is if you'll seek him and seek those things above, he'll know what you're going through. That's why he says, cast your cares upon me for I care upon you. But pride will say, no, I can fix it myself. Pride will say, I'll do this, I'll do that. And then they'll promote the butt ministry because they don't want God to get involved. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Let's go a little further. In verse 16. Let us what? Therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So where did he say to go? Did he say to go to the phone? No, he said to go to where? The throne. Did he say to go to your job? Your boss? Your pastor? No, he said go to the throne. Go to where? The throne. And then God's going to direct you what to do. If you'll go to the throne in prayer. See, and when you go to the throne, he'll open your eyes to see. Your ears to hear. The more you go to the throne, the more you come like him. More, more, and more. See, the more you know him, the more you want to know him. The more you know him, the more you love him. The more you love him, the more you hate self. And the more you want to walk in life, kingdom. And that kingdom of life that's not only within you, but then you want to walk in that life kingdom. So we need to take advantage. Take advantage of these things. Take advantage of what? Going to the throne. He, he paid the price for you. Take advantage of the access of his throne in the spirit. This is life in the kingdom. Ephesians 1. 
And we're going to close here. Ephesians chapter 1. Is everybody okay? Are you getting it? If you're not getting it, you're going to get it. <laughs> you're going to get it one way or another. You might as well get it now instead of later. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Would you read it with me? Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every, I'm telling you, every spiritual blessing where? In heavenly places in Christ. So everything is available for you in the Spirit. Not in the flesh, in the Spirit. Everything. There is there is nothing God is withholding from you. The only thing is, is that we're not going to go get it. We're not accessing it. And then we're not waiting for it. We're going, we're going, oh Lord, oh, I need this. Thank you. And then go buy it. And then you give God all the glory because you just bought it and you got yourself in debt. Hello. Waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. As a crucial part of a believer. So that you don't do the things in the flesh and entangle yourself in the affairs of the world. Waiting on the Lord. You wait for the Spirit to come. You wait for Him. He'll guide you. You'll wait for Him. You know, you may not know what to do right now, but you will. People say to me, hey, what you doing? How, how are you going to fix this? What you? I don't know, man. But I will. I'll wait. I don't know what the Lord's going to speak about. It comes usually when I get here. Or about a few minutes, hour before service, I have to go, I got to go find a word from the Lord. What do you, got? What do you want to do today, Dad? And then all things are subject to change. There could be a whole message and they'll tell me, put it aside. There's something, there's somebody who came that finally was obedient that he wants to speak to. And he'll change the whole course of the message for one person. But it will also minister to all. Verse 7. So we see here that in him we're blessed with every spiritual blessing, aren't we? And where? Heavenly places, not carnal places, not worldly places, heavenly places. Verse 7. In him we have what? Redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. So we've got what? Forgiveness. We've got redemption in Him. In verse 13, In Him you also trust that after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory. So in Him we are sealed with the Spirit. Why? The Spirit is who's going to make you walk where? In the kingdom. Without relationship in the Spirit, you cannot have a life in the kingdom. It's impossible. Are you hearing? Praise God. Go to verse 15. And let's read this together. Therefore, I also, after heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may what? Give you the spirit of wisdom. I'm not talking carnal wisdom. I'm talking above wisdom. And what? revelation and a knowledge of him so the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation which are the hidden things of god the mysteries of god the eyes of your understanding being what enlightened so that your eyes can be opened to the things of the spirit realm how many all want to see angels how many all want to see the glory of god and the power of god things to come the living creatures that's all available for me and you to access. There's, like I shared with you before, I was in the fitness place. And, and, and here I am ministering to these two people. And next thing I see, these two angels appear, one on each side. 
And, and these two people that were being ministered to, I was sharing, witnessing and sharing Christ with them and expanding the kingdom of God, their hair was standing straight up. I'm telling you, if they had ponytails, it would have been whoo. But there, there was an area where God, listen, even the Lord told Elijah, remember, when, when they were being attacked and they came to kill him. And they were outnumbered. I mean, they were outnumbered. The whole army came to get him. And his servant goes, uh, we in trouble. And Elijah says to him, you can't see, can you? He said, no. He said, Lord, open his eyes. And when he opened his eyes, he saw fire of horses, a chariots outnumbering the military that was coming against them. And then he called blindness on them. <laughs> and he, he was able to take them. See, if, you, if we could be really walking in the Spirit and begin to see the things of the Spirit. See, this is where God wants us now. Uh, a life in the kingdom. To see these things. To hear these things. To be sensitive to the things from above and not from this world. We want to know the voice of God. We want to know His unction in His presence. There must be a desire within you. It must start with a willing spirit. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may what? Know what is the hope of his calling, which are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in, in, hallelujah, in you, in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in where? The heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come. The ministry of the Spirit is to keep us in the life of the kingdom. Now I want to share a couple of things about the ministry of the Spirit. The first ministry of the Spirit is a ministry of oil. It's, uh, it's about oil. There's ministry of oil. And we've talked about some of this before. And what does the oil represent? The oil represents the, the burial of your death, of yourself. It's death and burial of self. The oil represents death and burial of self. It also represents the joy of kingdom life. It is a ministry of the Spirit. It's ministry of oil. Death and burial self. When, when um, Jesus was in one of the houses and uh, a woman came in there and broke the alabaster box and poured it on his feet. And, and his disciples said, man, we can use that oil and fed the poor. Yeah, right. And, uh, and Jesus said, you don't understand. She does a good thing. She is anointing me with the oil for my burial. See, that was the burial of self. Then the other ministry is a ministry of fire. And the ministry of fire is to refine. Is to refine and burn out the old. The ministry of the fire is to refine and burn out the old. That's why Jesus said, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. See, but all of these things don't happen unless you're in God's presence. You can't expect things to happen to you unless you are a worshiper and getting in his presence. These things do not happen out of his presence. They happen in his presence. Then you come and get his presence. You take his presence with you. You are walking in the spirit and the world is beginning to drain you again. Then you must get back in and worship again so you can get filled with his presence all over again. Do you understand? Because you will, you can tell when the presence of God begins to be removed from you. Because what you begin to do is begin to grab for carnal things for fulfillment. You begin to grab for carnal things for fulfillment. Instead of spiritual things for fulfillment. So we have the oil, the fire, the truth. The ministry of truth which opens eyes of understanding into the kingdom. Opens the eyes of kingdom life. So we have the ministry of the Spirit. It's the oil, fire, truth, and relationship. 
It's a ministry of relationship in the Spirit with the Father. It's a ministry of the relationship in the Spirit with the Father. Is everybody okay? It's a ministry of power. In Acts chapter 1-8, it says, And you shall have power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Power for what? To start your lawnmower? No. Power over the kingdom of darkness to witness to the world so that the world will see that you are not moved, that you are not deceived. That's why he does the ministry of truth. Why? To open your eyes to have a kingdom life so that you're not what? Deceived. But you have power now to say, no, you have power to cast out devils. When Jesus said, when the kingdom of God is upon you, and, and the demons re, are removed by the finger of God. He said, that's the kingdom of God. The Bible says, and those who believe shall cast out demons, speak with new tongues, lay hands on the sick. That's power. That's kingdom life. It's not running to the doctor for every little thing. It's running to the throne and not the phone. We must learn how to live in the kingdom and deny ourselves of fear, deny ourselves of want, and deny ourselves of survival and fall in the arms of the King of glory and let Him build your house and not you. And the other, as a ministry, is we are stewards. Stewards. It's the ministry of the Spirit, which is stewards. And we are stewards of the mysteries of God and the household of His treasures. Stewards of the mysteries of God in the household of his treasures. Does everybody get it? Is everybody okay? So life in the kingdom is eternal. It's not temporary. We are at a critical time. There's another shift going on. I'm telling you, there's a strong wave of Christ coming. And this strong wave is going to bring more oil, more fire more truth, more revelation, more impartation, and more death. People will miss it because they'll try to figure out things according to the carnal understanding and not according to the Spirit. If you're in survival mode, you're in the flesh. If you're in trust mode and surrender mode, if your motive is, how can I expand the kingdom of God? That's walking in the Spirit. Does everybody understand? We are in an important, critical time right now. There will be a unification in the Spirit in a mighty way. There will be a, a uniting where denominational walls will begin to melt. It's beginning to happen right now. The, I'm telling you, listen what the Spirit says. There's denominational walls beginning to melt. God is breaking through the barriers. He's laying down the doctrines in the area of competition in the Spirit. And He's bringing unity of His Spirit so that we can overcome that which the enemy is preparing to do. The kingdom must be expanded unto death. Amen? Get it. Life in the kingdom has got nothing to do with yourself. But it's got everything to do with him in you. This is a new day. Rejoice and be glad in it. And his mercies are new every morning. Now, Father, we just give you glory and honor and praise, and we thank you for your word and the ministry of your spirit. We are honored and blessed that this is not our home. This isn't our home, Lord. I pray for each and every one that a pure motive will be established in them and the purpose of why you rescued them. Because you're alive and you came to fix our life. But fixing our life was to remove our life so that we can have your life. <laughs> Listen, you don't go try to uh, put salve on a tumor. You cut it out. And that's what he did. Our, our self was a tumor. And he came to cut it out so that the life of Christ could have his way. So don't let it regrow. It will cause you pain and torment. So, Lord, we thank you in everything that you have spoken to us this morning, Lord. I apply the blood of Jesus on that seed that will grow and bear fruit for your glory. Establish us and prepare us. Bring conviction to each and every one of us, Lord, that we know what we need to lay down and what we need to pick up. 
Grant repentance and remove butt ministry from all of us that the ministry of the Spirit would have His way and Jesus would be glorified in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah!